Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and an interesting one for you today. How do you decide when you're going to do a flight, where you're going to fly from and where you're going to fly to? Quickly pause the video and enter a comment down below. What do you use currently to determine your departure airport and your arrival airport? Now, when I'm looking for a flight to do for our live streams, for example, I use a different combination of factors. Number one, I look at Flight Radar 24 to see if I can find an interesting flight that uh, EasyJet are currently doing. The other thing I can look for is airports that are obviously quite interesting. We know most of those now. And of course, the weather. Always nice to see what the weather is doing around Europe when planning a live stream. Of course, then on top of that, it's kind of nice if we can fly to the airports that we've actually purchased scenery for. Given the fact that we spent money on them, we want to utilize them. And if I know I've only got a couple of hours spare, I probably want a flight time not much longer than around an hour and a half. And of course, by the time I've actually worked all this out, I've probably lost 20 minutes just in deciding where to fly from and to. That's 20 minutes I could have spent flying. Recently though, a new add-on for Flight Simulator came out and that was called Airport Finder. Now, don't be misled by the title. Airport Finder is perhaps rather not that indicative of what it actually does. What this tool does well is it helps you decide on a flight, depending on how much time you've got, what sceneries you have installed, and it also allows you to check out the weather as well. It's free to download from flightsim.to and of course is installed in any normal way. However, this is an external program. So the great thing about this is obviously once you've finished using it, you can close it down before starting Flight Sim so you've not got another extra program running in the background. The first thing it asks you to do is to tell it where your community folder is. The moment it does that, it obviously scans everything. And as you can see here, I've got uh, a few airports currently in my community folder. You can see those all shown in green. If you use add-on linker as well, it also can facilitate those. So it knows all of the sceneries that you've got, perhaps not currently active in the community folder. I shut the program down put some more uh, sceneries into my community folder and now you can see all of my payware add-on sceneries that we've got. Not all payware of course, some of them are just freewares from flightsim.to. Another nice little touch as well is it tells you what current version of the airports you've got installed. Handy if you uh, think it's been a while, you can check the current active version and update if necessary. So let's take a quick look at the features of this program and how we can perhaps use it to uh, cut down on the amount of time we spend deciding where we're going to fly. By default, the only airports that are shown are those in your community folder. Of course, you can change this using the little tool here on the left. So you can select it to display large airports. You can then select a specific airport and how many uh, miles around that. And as you can see here, I just uh, selected large airports. I'd not selected any specific uh, radius around any airport. And of course, this then uh, accounts for the entire world, not just the, uh, the region that you've got shown on your screen. You can then select any of the airports, for example here if I select London Gatwick, obviously you get all the weather information. You can then from here go and pop in the amount of miles that you're roughly looking to want to fly. So if I go and select 200, then obviously you can see here that all of the airports in blue are the default airports, but it will continue to show you all of your custom scenery files, uh, regardless of this, uh, of this radius that you have just set. And as I turn on more and more airports, the smaller airports, the medium airports, let's just put them all on, then there you can clearly see that, uh, that uh, radius which uh, I've got set there showing in the nice circle, all based around London Gatwick. Using the same dialog box then we can go ahead and show the weather. First of all we'll have a look at precipitation. So as you can see that's uh, obviously shown in uh, in green with its severity as uh, as well. And you've also got the option then of changing from precipitation to clouds which overlays a nice satellite image uh, as you can see here. So obviously you can identify uh, fronts and things like that. We can see a little storm there off to the uh, to the east of uh, Iceland and a little weather front coming in down here in Lisbon, Portugal. So this is another one of the deciding factors I like to use when deciding where to fly from or fly to. 
So if I am now considering a flight from Gatwick to Lisbon, I can go ahead and calculate airport distance, things like that. So we'll just go ahead and add those. You can either type those in or you can actually set them as your uh, departure airport or arrival airport. Either way works fine. Once you've done that then, it will tell you the distance and it'll tell you your estimated time en route with an average of uh, its 290 knots here. You can obviously amend this depending on your uh, speed, but around 290, 300 knots is probably a good gauge for the uh, for the Airbus 320 and you can see it's just going to take us a little under three hours to complete that flight so if you've got the time for that then great if not we need to look at some alternates you can let the program choose some random selections for you based on what you set as your departure airport and arrival so if I just put two of my random sceneries in there obviously I can just keep hitting the refresh button until I get a, a route that I like or a route that is the right length for me depending on how much time I've uh, I've got to do or if I know for whatever reason that I absolutely want to depart from London Gatwick then I could set this up as a custom airport and then just keep cycling through the random sceneries that I've got until again I'm happy with the route that uh, that it decides if I know I've only got a short time I can limit this to a flight from Gatwick of around 200 miles go ahead and set this and obviously you can see the the radius shown here and I'll just keep cycling through until it comes up with a flight that I find uh, that I find appropriate so there we go guys I think it's a great little tool that will hopefully help me save loads of time when it comes to choosing flights hopefully it will help you as well available of course from flightsim.to and you can go ahead and download that for free now link is in the video description down below if you have got this then let me know down in the comments what you think of this if you think anything could be improved upon or if you found it to be really really useful thanks so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please do hit the like button and of course if you you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss any future content or live streams thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye for now